Let's go ahead and look at triggers and events here. And in AWS Lambda in the console, you can notice that this API gateway is triggered, but if I wanted to add a different kind of trigger, if I went ahead and selected, for example, an S3 trigger, and we can go down here and find it, what it'll do is it'll ask me to list the bucket and then also ask me to list what kind of event uh, I'd wanna monitor and then I could do things like look for images, for example, and then invoke a Lambda function. So what we're gonna look at next here is an example of how to use something that does that kind of a trigger. So in this particular repo, uh, I have some code here and we can take a look at it. And what it does is uh, it finds in particular the labels for an image that you put into uh, in a S3 bucket. So we, we drop an image inside, uh, it goes through, it uses the AWS recognition detect labels uh, command, and then it goes through and prints out those labels. And then inside of this Lambda handler, what happens is that it listens for the event of an object being placed inside of the, the bucket, right? So this is a, a great pattern here that can be used for many different kinds of uh, applications. And we can actually take a look at this in action by going over to this particular Lambda. So let's go ahead and uh, scroll over here and find that that particular lambda. Here we go, S3 bucket label. And what's great about this is if I look through here, I can just you know see the same piece of code. And in particular, we can actually see where this S3 trigger is set up. If I go through here, notice that it says it's on object creation, and actually the lambda is called uh, is called on the particular bucket. Lambda trigger demo Duke. Okay, let's go ahead and find that out. So what I can do is I can open up a new console window here, go to S3, and then uh, find that particular bucket. So uh, let's see here, I think it had the word Duke in it. So let's go ahead and find this. Um, and here we go, Lambda trigger demo Duke. We can see that there's already a couple pictures in there where I've uh, tested it uh, earlier. So I'm gonna go over to this picture of a of a tiger here, and I'm gonna go ahead and download this. So we'll go ahead and, and download this picture here. Sure, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, go ahead and put that thing down, great. And now if I go over to this bucket, um, and I, uh, again, go ahead and drop an image in there, let's go ahead and say upload, I can select from the downloads that I just added. Okay, here we go. We can go to that downloads directory. Here's the picture and um, go ahead and say upload, perfect. All right, so it's, it's uploading inside of this directory. And then the next thing that I can do is actually see how it actually was called. So if I go back to this Lambda, the way to, to verify what it did is to look on the monitor window and then say view logs in CloudWatch. And then this will allow us to see those print statements that show exactly what it did. So here we go, look, here's the name of that file, Pexels Flickr 145939. And notice that it said it found these labels and these labels are exactly the labels I would expect. You know, it's a tiger, it's wildlife, uh, and it's able to uh, automatically do those actions. Now later, maybe you would wanna put this in some other location or put it into a, a database, but in general, that's how a bucket works. And in fact, we can even look at this in action. If I go to this diagram that I've got here, which is serverless image label trigger. And this is really what's going on is we have a bucket. Uh, I drop this image into the bucket. Uh, it goes, it uh, sets up that trigger. Uh, we we're able to use the recognition API. Uh, it goes through and then writes off that computer vision label to some other location. Again, it could be a database. It could be another uh, S3 location. And one final thing to show here is if I go back to my Cloud9 environment, I can, I can select AWS and I can find that trigger, which again is called um, S3 bucket trigger, uh, S3 bucket label. Let's just double check that that's the one we want. Yeah, S3 bucket label, that's the one we want. And if I right click on this, I can say um, import. And what import does is a pretty, pretty cool little command here is that it uh, will grab that external function and actually pull down the source code right inside of my local environment. 
and, and take a look at this. Inside here, we can see that I've actually uh, now have the capability to edit this if I wanted to uh, even copy. Uh, if I had special test functions inside of there, it would it would put those inside of there. So this is one of the the great workflows is the ability to not only you know put things up into the cloud with Cloud9, but also to test them uh, like we just did, and also to pull back into Cloud9 and edit it.